Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So this video is going to be really informative guys and make sure to watch the video till the end. Today in this video we are going to discuss about one of the amazing scholarship that is offered by Google. So make sure to watch the complete video. To have a discussion on the same, I have invited Muskan on my YouTube channel. Let me tell you guys that she has been recently selected for B scholar program. So we will be having a discussion on the same with her. And uh, before proceeding further, don't forget to subscribe my channel and make sure to join our Telegram community as well. So yeah, Muskan, I believe that's all from my side. You can start with your introduction. Um, hi everyone. First of all, thank you for calling me on this platform. I'm Muskan Walia, electronics student from MS Ramai Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Yes, fortunately, I have been selected as a V scholar. Uh, v scholarship is the Women Engineering Scholarships sponsored by Google and supported by the Google company. Okay. So guys, let me tell you, we'll be having a discussion on the same in this video itself, Let's uh, like what this program is all about and eligibility criteria and how the selection process is. So uh, regarding this, let's open to the next question. So Muskan, I would like to know, like, what is this program all about and what is the eligibility criteria for this? Basically, we is uh, earlier it was known as Women Engineering Fellowship uh, Tech Makers Program by Google. Now you can easily search it by the name of V Program offered by Talent Sprint. Mm -hmm. So it's a program which is supported by Google, and this is the program primarily for women engineers who are currently in their first year. And yes, they have as such no eligibility criteria for branch. But usually they prefer branches like CS, IT, mathematics and computing or electronic related branches. Another eligibility criteria is you should be a first year female engineering student and you should secure you should have secured seven more than 70 percent in class 10th and 12th. That's the basic eligibility criteria. Nothing more than that. Okay. And like, what's the benefit of this program, you know, like uh, what they'll be teaching and what you will be learning from this program? Uh, this program is highly benefited as far as my thinking, because first of all, in any resume, writing down that in 60,000 applicants, you are among the top 50 all over India. That counts a lot for any candidate. So because in last few batches, more than 55,000 plus applicants have applied all over India, among which only top 250 get the 1 lakh rupee scholarship. So when I say 1 lakh rupee scholarship, another benefit is counted in that because you get a cash, uh, cash scholarship of 1 lakh. Rupees. And the main benefit of it is that you are trained for two months. Like it's not just a job or a placement. It's much more than that. You are being trained how to become a successful engineer in the tech industry and right from the first year. So it counts a lot. And you are trained by the Googlers. Like you are having the opportunity to interact with the people who are already living your dream. So it's a great thing. And also you get chances to visit Google offices and other things. You get the correct exposure at the correct time. And the last but not the least is you get placement opportunity. It's not as of sure or they have given it. But even if we see the last batches, among 250 students, around top 30 girl students were directly offered Google internship. Mm -hmm. And other were also involved in companies like Oracle, Microsoft, uh, D show like 250 plus companies they have on their board so yes your placement chances do increases but that is not as a promise like other things are guaranteed scholarship training but internship is not guaranteed but yes if you perform well you get an opportunity for sure and as this is a special message for all electronic students who are from non-cs branches but are focusing on cs careers for me, the biggest advantage was to answer that question, ki, oh, you are from a non-CS branch, still you want to pers pursue the career in IT field, why? And how do we know that you are compatible as a CS student? So yes, now this scholarship answers that question really well, because from the very first year, I have been trained by the great tech professionals. So I have something to say that, yes, even being a non-CS student, I'm very much capable compatible like any other CS student. 
right right exactly and even congratulations for the same and i must say that you have explained the things very well and uh, you know by listening to you i came to know okay, the there are so many benefits of the program because the things are not just related with the placement only there are so many stuff that people can explore the girls specifically can explore and later on it's your efforts right whatever you're going to get true okay. so let's uh, talk about the next thing that is regarding the selection process and that's the main stuff i will so what is the selection process for this program and how you prepared for this uh first of all i would like to clarify the selection process do change a little bit every year because it's up to google and talent sprint what they want to test each year according to the demands but basically the first three rounds are quite compulsory since the beginning of this program the first round is aptitude round it's like you can practice i practice aptitude uh, aptitude from java t point website and it's a basic aptitude exam you get uh, 25 questions on logical aptitude and there's 25 on uh, just mathematical aptitude so it's not of that much high level i feel if you have prepared well for any competitive exam till now till 12th in your life then it will be quite easy for you to go through the aptitude paper after you uh, like perform well in aptitude paper you go on to the next level which can be either english version test or can be coding round for us it was english version uh, version test first so in that you don't have to practice that much if you have a little confidence on your english speaking and hearing skills yes they do provide you with a demo video which you can see on youtube and just get an idea of what actually english version test is all about and it's quite easy i feel uh, if you are quite fluent with your english and have a habit of conversate have a having a conversation with people in english then you can handle it really well and the third round for it is coding round now that's where the real twist comes uh they give you one week to prepare for it they also provide you with resources to prepare for it but the resources they provide is primarily from python because they believe if you don't know any language then to learn a language in the span of one week then python is the most safest option to go for mm -hmm. but obviously you have options of c plus java and c also like there are four languages you can have your coding test in any one of them i knew c++ and java from before but i opted c++ because you have to write much lesser in that and uh, the format of coding test is like three questions were on code reading where you just have to read the code and tell us the output while the other two were of code writing where we were given programs for me because i was into programming languages since class 9 so and my first programming language was java so i was expecting questions were of level like sorting searching i had revised all of them but the questions are of simple level they do understand that we are from first year and not everyone will be quite familiar with all the languages so the questions were easy like i would say beginner level if you also have little logic of maths and have even gone through your first semester syllabus of c you can easily crack it with c i don't think so there will be an issue but for the coding round that's what as i mentioned in the beginning they didn't allow uh, core branches like all the students who were from chemical like i had a friend who was from it bhq chemical branch she wasn't allowed to write the coding test although they did, they did not mention in the beginning of any eligibility of any branch but yes late in later on rounds they do filter regarding this so till electrical electronics they allow but after that they restrict and the last round for us which was a new round this year was interview round so in personal interview round it's not more about your knowledge or anything it's much more about your excitement for the program how much you know about it like have you searched about it for me i had a upper hand in this round because i had connections on linkedin with the alumni of this program so i had asked them several questions even they really guided me well how to prepare for this so even before the program or uh, releasing its information i knew how were the rounds going to be to a little knowledge so that's what you need to do connect on linkedin with the alumni of the programs you really want to secure a position in so i did the same and that's what the questions are generally asked in the interview is 
what do you know about this program how much time will you be able to give to it how much what expectations do you have from it and then also if you have any questions from the interviewer related to this program you can just ask from them too so that's a pretty cool thing if you are just excited and confident in yourself i think so you get a call but yes if you lose out on your confidence or if you are not clear or you don't look excited to them for this program then surely they will not be really welcoming towards you mm-hmm. yeah, um i must say that yes you have you know give a proper explanation of all the rounds i'm just curious to know is there any certain cut off right for the you know to get uh, filtered the students like who will be shortlisted who don't so that you know other students those who are watching can get some idea uh see there's uh, as such they don't release any cut off or results or the reasons behind you are not selected it's just simple as it that if you are selected you get a mail if you are not you don't get a mail and as they don't leak out their information as such but yes i would uh, say that if like you get 50 questions in aptitude mm-hmm. so take and have try to do all 50 like fortunately i was able to do all 50 in less than 1 hour the time that was given to me because they were quite easy but even if not 50 try to keep your score above 40 plus because it depends on the competition and as you are seeing that the technology and the informations are just rising day by day so right. the knowledge no not any more days that the knowledge will be hidden or the people will be unaware mm-hmm. so the awareness is spreading like anything through the thank you to the youtube channels like you so the competition will obviously increase every year mm-hmm. so it's better to take an average of 40 plus questions for aptitude and it's easy it's scoreable because the math question are really easy it's like profit and loss uh, like i can tell you some important chapters that will be statistics mm-hmm. profit and loss and uh, that can also be some quadratic equations but they are really simple if you really practice you can just have 40 plus questions on your plate and the logical questions are also on based on direction relations series that we usually see in other exams too mm-hmm. so keep a target of 40 plus there for version test i would say it's up out of 80 usually so keep a target of 65 plus which is easy to score like i expected a 75 plus score according to me but on that day due to my microphone issue i was not able to do well so that is also a warning please check your microphones before the english version test so i could secure only 70 so i thought that oh it's not a good score out of 80 or something but no it proved to be a good score so this keep 60 plus i think so all those who were above 60 could clear that round and the third round which is coding round i would always say do all the questions correct they also provide you with the compiler check option you can check your program whether it's giving the right output or not don't worry if your program is not giving the right output on the very first time it's fine it's okay you can just they judge you on your final submission not on your checking so keep checking your program try until you get the correct output and in coding i would prefer you get all the questions right because even the ones who could not get one question right were not qualified because it's the second last round and here they are like really hard on allowing people like they are very serious about this round because they even give you we had three meetings with the uh, instructors and mentors who also cleared our doubts relating to coding problems or practicing if we have any so they are really serious about the coding round so it's better you get each and every question right in the coding round and for interview it's like i just said you just need to be seen as an excited participant of this program and if they see that thing like that you are confident and you are excited for this interview round is handled okay. so yeah muskan i believe like these were the questions from my side and again it's so pleasure to have you here on my youtube channel but before wrapping up the video i would like to know if you have any advice any message for your juniors or the audience watching the video my first and the foremost advice is please don't go by the general things i remember somebody advised me during my college day uh, college beginning days that the general rules are for the general people exceptions make their own rules i know whenever we cross through je and other competitive exams many a times we are really happy many a times we are really sad but don't waste time in depression i tell you 
my little background i came to know about this v program after my j because i thought that whatever happens happens with my result that's it i have done there what i have to do now i'll focus on my future things so i started surfing the youtube channels related to the opportunities that any software engineering student can have in the first year second year and then only i came to know about this v program because as somya said you don't find much information about this program so i found out more i made my linkedin account even before i was into college i had 50 connections on my linkedin i asked them about more opportunity so that's how you do don't think that i am not from iit so i cannot achieve this i am not from a cs branch so i am not eligible for this many people said to me ki you can't clear if clear this scholarship because you are not an iit and you cannot clear because you are not from a cs branch don't you just say i want to try and i'll try until i win and you really don't know you might win and it's just a, such a happy feeling for me because even students from dtu and iit banaras and iit kanpur who were from electrical branch even many of them have not been selected and me being selected as a v scholar from google it's just fortunate and i'm really happy and i'm more than happy because i could defy those norms those and there was bias norms that say that only a cs student only an iit and cs student can excel no if you have the talent you have the will you have the way so just keep practicing and also subscribe to this great channel <laughs> so me is really working hard for you all guys so all the best thank you so much ms khan and i believe the words that you just mentioned are going to be really motivating and inspiring for all the students watching and even i must say you yourself are a motivation and my it was my pleasure to have you here on my channel so thank you Same so much ms khan bye bye thank you bye bye